Now the third approach is the Delphi technique, or Delphi method, Delphi process. Now this was established at the end of World War II um, by the United States, where they had been involved in some very large decision-making processes around spending billions of dollars and sending um, many, many troops and uh, war fighting equipment to Europe at the end of the Second World War. And what they discovered was that sometimes it was difficult to make decisions in a fair and unbiased way because certain personalities um, were too strongly involved in the decision making process. So they came up with the Delphi technique. And the idea of the Delphi technique is to make sure that all the participants, all the experts involved, have a say that no one voice gets to dominate overly um, and it's achieved through a system of anonymity so that the ideas being expressed are not associated with an individual so they can't force an opinion on the group and that allows a much more open expression of ideas because there's also not the repercussions um, in the military uh, when the commanding officer says something should happen, then the subordinates will tend to agree because there could be significant repercussions in terms of their career progression and so forth. But that can lead to poor decision making where the ideas of others um, may be the best idea, not necessarily the person who has the most power or influence over a particular situation. So there are a few other processes involved in the Delphi technique that are different to the other consensus methods. Um, probably the key one is that it goes through several rounds. So essentially, it starts off with um, a normally some information um, sharing and um, readings and so forth to be familiar with the problem. And then there is a a range of options that are presented. Now these might be developed by the Delphi participants or they may be pre-developed by the moderator and the experts will vote on those options. Now the results of that voting are then presented to the experts and say the top five educational technologies like that have an impact upon education in the next five years. Um, and then there is ideally um, a discussion that occurs anonymously. Um, sometimes that's not possible if it's face to face, but there is normally some examination of the feedback. And then a second round of voting is done based upon our, the participants understanding of that first round because um, that may allow them to see the problem in different lights. So I say, oh, okay, um, this option was considered by others to be quite significant. Maybe I need to think a bit more about that option and reconsider it. And so the second round tends to provide a more balanced, um, reflective perspective on the problem. Now, then if there's a clear consensus achieved, then that's all well and good. If not, say there might be two or three that have still got similar votes, it would then go to a third round and potentially other rounds until a consensus is achieved as to what the group feels is the most um, significant outcome from the research question. So the Delphi technique is again decide, designed to come up with a particular response to a research question. Now it can be quite a broad range of possible research questions, but they often can involve ranking. Um, whereas many research techniques will give a research question option, um, consensus methods are quite effective in producing a ranked uh, consensus on research, uh, res possible research uh, answers to the research question which can be a little bit more nuanced than some of the other research methodologies that we have available. Now, of course, there are still issues around 
any consensus um, technique. This selection of the experts is again open to bias and needs to be considered. The anonymity needs to be um, maintained. Uh, the feedback can be done either to the entire group or to individuals and that process of discussion and engagement with the feedback can either be done as a group or individually and which is more anonymous. Uh, the number of rounds can influence the time it takes to conduct the Delphi technique. Um, and the voting system can be open to abuse potentially. Now, the Delphi technique of all of these techniques has been the most amenable to the use of technology. And a lot of technology um, or online tools have been developed to enable the Delphi technique to be more effective. And you are going to be using one such tool, um, the All Our, All Our Ideas um, tool. So one advantage of doing it with technology is the limitations that have been inherent with the other techniques around the number of participants can disappear. And indeed, it can actually be more productive in terms of the Delphi technique and more effective to have more participants, numbering in the hundreds or thousands, even tens of thousands of participants. Of course, the voting can be done online and the feedback can be provided online. There's no inherent um, constraints around the organization of the Delphi process. So that can allow a much um, stronger consensus. Now, it still needs to rely upon a level of expertise. It's not just a pure survey. Um, it does require a level of expertise from participants to make informed decisions as to their votes. But that is still possible where there are a range of experts. Um, some Delphi techniques I've used if involve all the um, teacher educators in Australia, or all of those involved in uh, making decisions around educational technologies. And normally that's around about 50 participants. Um, beyond that, you don't get a huge um, cost, value, cost benefit to going to huge numbers. And indeed, probably between 10 and 20 is still a good number for any consensus um, process. But it does tend to enhance the research uh, validity around bias when you have larger numbers. Of course, you can then reduce the opportunity for one particular group to have an over emphasis in the decision making process. So that's the Delphi technique. So of the three techniques we've looked at, we'll explore these in more detail in the tutorials.